Today you will hear a word from heaven that will change the course of your life. I'm believing that as we get into the word of the Lord today, the word will be taught and preached with clarity. It will bring balance and direction and it will lift your faith up to believe in the things of God. We believe that as you keep listening, the power of God will come upon you and meet your need. Welcome to the Hour of Solution. Lift your right hand says, I will acquaint myself. It says, acquaint now. Come to terms with the Most High and be at peace. If you don't learn to pray, you won't be at peace. Come to terms with the Most High and He will put you at peace. You are trusting the wrong year, the wrong family members. You are putting your confidence in non-working entities. But the Bible says that if you will acquaint now thyself with Him, the Lord, the, the God of the universe, blessed be His holy name, acquaint now thyself with Him. Hallelujah. Acquaint now thyself with who? With him, Jehovah, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Do you love that already? He said, thereby what? Good shall what? He says, come to terms with God and be at peace in his way. Good will will come to you. Good will. The world calls it uh, uh, good luck. We call it favor. Praise God. So you come to terms with God. Come to terms with God. Follow the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions are that the people of God, when they lift up the voice, before they pray, God says, I heard them. Hallelujah. Whilst yet the word was in their mouth, God said, I heard them. Praise the Lord. So come to terms with that. Come to terms with thy creator. That God means you well. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee. Let's go to verse number 22. Praise God. It says, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his word in thine heart. Listen to what this version says. It says, receive instructions from his mouth and place his sayings in your heart. Hmm. Receive, I pray thee, the King James says, the law of the instructions from his mouth. What are the instructions of God? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It is a law of the Lord. It came from the mouth of Jehovah. Praise God. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. It is a law of the Lord. It is a declaration of the Lord. Praise Jesus forevermore. Receive instructions from him and his sayings in your heart. Look at verse 23. It says, if you return to the Almighty, folks, if we shall return with prayer, hallelujah, if we shall return with prayer, we shall see the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, if we shall return with prayer, we shall see the hand of the Lord. God does not use titles. God uses availability. You may title yourself until we can't find a title on earth to accommodate you. And you'll still be an earthly baggage. But when you want to become heavenly good, you make sure that heaven signs you on as an entity of power because you're a person of prayer. The people that know their God through prayer, they shall be strong. Glory to God. If thou will return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, not broken down. Thou shalt be built. Say, I shall be built up. Hallelujah. If thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. Listen to what the, it, this version says. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you will be renewed. 
if you banish injustice from your tent. Glory to God. Injustice from your tent. If you banish it, you will see the hand of God. May the hand of God recover any and everything that seems to be going in slow motions. There is a demon of slow motion that causes people's giftings, abilities, callings, and all that God wants for them to be in slow motion. You see, when, when, when God commanded Lazarus to come out from the grave, even though Lazarus came alive, yet the Bible says, he was still bound in grave clothes. And can you imagine a person in grave clothes? They'll be walking like this. Walking like this. They can't move towards destination. But yet they have life in them. There is a scroll that has been written upon some people. That you will never move fast. But by the power of the living God. Every place where there is a lead place upon the scroll of your life. By divine edit and by the power and the force of prayer. We uncover the lead and we declare tonight. Let the heavens be open. Let the God who answers prayer. Let him answer prayer. And let God break through now in the name of Jesus. If thou return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. God is seeking to build in you up. God is seeking to build in me up. God is not seeking to tear in you. The year ahead of us is a year of fulfillment. It's a year of blessing and increase. It's a year of enlargement. Hallelujah, it's a year of expansion. But it's also a year of testing. But if you shall return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. There are many who fall by the wayside because they lack prayer power. And so they're not able to return to the Most High. That's to see the hand of God, the dealings of God, the workings of God. But I pray the mercies of God, that the Lord will help us to pray. Amen. Glory to God. I've spent considerably hours today in the Word and in prayer. And I guarantee you, that the years ahead of us will be good if you only tell yourself to prayer. Now, I'm not talking about wishful thinking. Because you may wish a thing and never do anything about it. I'm talking about agonizing prayer. Prayer that carries volume. Prayer that carries weight. Prayer that when you, when you say amen in the end, you know that some release has taken place. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about prayer that you said amen to yourself and went away and you only know that it was just a motion. No. Prayer that touches the heavens. Prayer that unseats darkness. Prayer that changes the scroll. Prayer that opens that which has been put and led upon by the divine decree of God. We are moving forward to be built by the power of the Almighty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if thou shalt return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. God is seeking to build in somebody's life. God is seeking to build in somebody's life. Verse 24 says, this is what God will do. Thou shalt lay up gold as dust. And the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. It all starts by returning in prayer. It means that there will be no lack. Praise God. Thou shalt lay up gold as dust. You shall walk upon it. It's not going to be something you're going to be running for it. Dust is something under our feet. We were made out of it. But God says what we have been made out from, there is also gold in it. When God made man out of clay, there was yet gold in the earth. And God gave dominion to man, to everything on the face of the earth. And God is a part of the things that God has given man dominion over. It is a replica of financial release and financial blessing. But do you understand that the enemies? has torn many people's pockets, according to the prophet. The prophet said, they work, they earn wages, and they put their salaries into their pockets only to find that it's been cut. And thus their wages just fall to the ground. That's why it's pay in, pay out. Pay in, pay out. You are earning much but not seeing anything. That scroll will have to be rewritten by the divine power of God. 
every power of darkness from the region of the underworld that seeks to unseat your finances we arise in the power of god almighty to say enough is enough we are the people of the living God and we arise to prayer. It is our season to say, let the powers of darkness abate and let the God who answers by fire, let him answer us now in the name of the Lord. We're no longer going to be walking in penury and in coins, but we're going to become contributors for the kingdom of God. We're not going in slow motions either. We're going in full force. By the time you close your eyes in death, it should be that you contributed to either building a church or that you built one for the glory of God. Praise God forevermore. Look at the Muslims. They are building mosques everywhere. And people are not giving credence to it. It's about time we put churches in every corner. Praise God forevermore. His kingdom, his magisterial rule and authority shall triumph over all. And the people that understand that God does not work the arithmetic of heaven by human calculation, but by men that pray, men that seek God, men that penetrate the deep darkness, men that say, we shall not sleep until you give us Scotland, until you give us the city of false church. We shall not give sleep to our eyes. You realize that any time you embark on serious prayer, the enemy leaves you for a moment. Then for a while he throws in a wrench. And then he distorts your vision. And you'll never return to that again. you see that there was a time. There was a desire in you to pray midnight prayer. You started. You pr were praying. And things were advancing. God was releasing secrets to you and stuff. And then whilst you got comfortable. The enemy came and blew. The scroll was written. And said to you sit down. You are disturbing me. And you also sat down. When you sat down, he put a lid on it. And you have never visited it. 2019, pick up from where you left off. Pick up from where you left off. Lift up your prayer weapon by the Spirit of God. Let darkness understand that by force and by violence, we take the kingdom. Praise the Lord. We are possessors of the kingdom. We unseat all the craftiness of darkness. And by the power of the divine God, we say to him that and her that has been deroped and put down in a pit with a lead on top, it's your season to come up. Come up by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 25, Job 22, 25. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, Yay! The Almighty. He shall be thy defense. I thought you would shout amen on that one. Amen. I'm telling you money is good, but if you have no defense, you are in trouble. Amen. Bless God. I remember one time I had gone to Nigeria to preach for my dear friend, Reverend Dr. John Ueze. And they gave me sacks of money. And they realized that I couldn't carry that thing alone. <laughs> so they gave me a policeman. You need a defense. Praise God forevermore. Otherwise, you'll be carrying money, but you'll have insecurities. You'll be carrying gold, but you have insecurities. But the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Hallelujah. Lift up your prayer life. Lift up your prayer level. Lift up your prayer mantle. Lift up a season. There is a season upon us. You have to look very well because I'm telling you, 2019... Don't crisscross my path. It's going to be very, it's going to be dangerous, seriously. Because I've wasted many years behind me. The, the, the years ahead. Oh yeah, we have to recover some things. He says, yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Let your hand say, the Lord shall be my defense. Say it. Say, the Lord shall be my defense. <laughs> the Lord God shall be your defense. He will defend you. In other words, you'll be secure in him. The Almighty. Now listen to what the word says here about defense. Now remember the previous verses. And consign your gold to the dust. The gold of offer and to stones of the weighties. The Almighty will be your gold. It uses the word defense for gold. 
Now money is a defense. Amen. When you have money, when you talk, people listen. When you are broke, people walk by you. <laughs> but the hour is changing. Oh, friends, I said the hour is changing. I said the hour is changing. Men are prayed in their rooms and seen the heavens open. And from nowhere, people that were supposed to bring them goods and services, they brought it at their back on. And it shall be so unto us. George Mueller had an orphanage in Bristol. And he prayed on the day where all these orphans under his care were hungry. They didn't know where food was coming from. The Reverend Mueller told them to bow their heads, to put their plates and cutlery in place, to bow their heads and to pray to the Almighty. To this with groans and with tears he offered prayer. At the end he said, the kids should say amen. They said amen. All of a sudden they heard a truck had broken right in front of the orphanage. It was carrying food for another place. But the truck would never be able to get to destination point. And so these kids would have to load in fresh milk, fresh baked bread, fresh meat. That's what God does. Hallelujah. Masuta kade bazutaya. That's what God does. The people that know God, they will be able to command elements and things to obey by the word of the Lord. There is something that God is preparing, but it requires the people to be in the timeline, in the prophetic timeline. My friends, you can't be in prophetic timeline and be lazy in prayer. When it's time to pray, you are snoring and sleeping in between. No, your scroll is, is, is the enemy is trying to steal your scroll. The only time you feel your eyes get heavy like the disciples is when destiny has to change and power has to be given you. All of a sudden, the whole day you are fine. Even to that evening you are fine. The moment prayer started, all of a sudden your eyes, your eyes are getting heavier. Yeah, it is the enemy. He's blowing because he knows that a better thing has to be written. Ha! <laughs> what is written about me in the volumes of a book, it cannot be reversed and it cannot be changed. The only the only person that can delay it is me. I can move in slow motion if I don't deal with the demon of slow motion. Now lift your hand and say, every demon of slow motion that will try to operate around me in any way by the fire of heaven, you are devoured in the name of Jesus. For my defense is of the living God. Glory to God. Money is a defense. It says the Almighty will be your gold and your finest silver. Verse 26 says, For then shalt thou have delight in the Almighty. Do you know that people actually want to do things for God, but they don't have it. So when other people are doing it, they wish it was they themselves who were doing it. But there is a day of fragrance coming. When people get up, you'll also get up. When people rise, you say, we shall build something for God. You shall also build something for God. Praise God. When people lead the way and they come and tell us the story that God moved and God did and God did that and the other, you shall not only be the story hearer, but you shall partake in the testimony itself. In the market square, in your offices, in the, in the, at the mall, God will give you opportunity to pray for a sick person. Amen. Glory to God. Were you not at a Christian bookshop when somebody died and God let the person come alive? Yes, it is the power of God. Amen. Church service was not going on. It was in the market square. And in the market square, God will give you an opportunity for something to happen. But don't, don't look at your phone and call 911 as your first resort. Say, let me offer prayer for there is a God who answers prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Trim your lambs. Trim your lambs. It's only when you trim your lambs that it's brighter. You can see better. Say amen to that. Yes. And then the foolish virgins, they went to sleep without trimming their lambs. Part of that message, I know it's a nice catological message about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it also has to do with prayer. Prayer is trimming your lamp. The more you pray, the more you trim your, your lamp. 
If you don't trim your lamp, it's not going to get brighter. The more you pray, the more you keep the enemy at bay. The more you exercise yourself in prayer, the more you keep the enemy at bay. The people that pray shall see results. Prayer is not a decoration. Prayer is connectivity with the powers of the living God. And so when men pray and women pray, there is always a prophetic release. In Luke, the second chapter, we find Anna and we find Simeon. Both of them are in prayer. Anna stays in the temple and she prays until there is a prophetic release. Prayer gives birth to prophetic release. And where there is a prophetic release, this thing written on the scroll will be what God says it should be. I said the thing written on the scroll, according to Zechariah 5 and 8, it shall be what God says it shall be. There shall be no flying scroll with any evil intent written upon it. But there shall be a static scroll, not a flying one. A static scroll. Amen. When some things are flying, you can't quite see it. But there shall be a static scroll. Rasutapari. There shall be a static scroll. You shall see and examine the words of the Lord. And you shall be satisfied with our soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 27. Verse number 27. Thou shalt make, watch, watch it, watch it. Let's actually read it together. Ready, go. Thou shalt what? Make prayer unto who? Unto him. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt what? Make prayer unto who? Unto him. We are in Job chapter 22 and verse 27. Thou shalt what? Make prayer unto who? Unto him who? Elohim. The God of the universe. Thou shalt make prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. Say God shall hear me. Now when God hears you, he answers you. I said when God hears you, he answers you. But when this healing is the one that heard you. And God never heard you. You are in trouble. When your neighbor, like the Pharisee, is the one who heard your prayer, you are in trouble. But when God hears you, there will be an answer. I said there will be an answer. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto who? Unto Elohim. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Let's listen to what this version says. You will pray to him. He will hear you. And you will fulfill your vows. Now listen to this. When you pray, he makes the dust become the dust which is gold. Come under your dominion and under your feet. Glory to God. I said glory to God. He gives you authority of a financial realm. Not only authority of a financial realm, but he's able to help you honor your obligations. Because a vow is something you open your mouth to say, I shall. But the Bible says a way to offer and to pay a vow is to talk to God. If you will talk to him, he'll put gold under your feet. And you will lift up prayer and he will hear you. And he, once he hears you, you'll be able to find the answer to paying the vow. The glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said glory be to God. This version says, you pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. Verse 28 says, when you make a decision, it will be carried out and light will shine on your ways. <laughs> when you make a decision, it will be carried out, not aborted. When you make a decision, it will be carried out. Listen to what the King James, the King James, I think we all know it. Thou shalt also make, also decree a thing. How many of you know that scripture? Ah, oh, yeah, I know you know that. <laughs> Thou shalt also decree a thing. It shall be what? It shall be what? Uh -huh. Do you know what it, it takes to make a decree? Commoners don't make decrees. Ordinary people do not make a decree. You have to be enrobed to write to make a decree. Kings are the ones that make decrees. Have you ever heard a poor person going about, well, I'm changing the laws of the United States. I'm changing what Kong, how Congress is going about. 
all, all of us here, we are under the mercy of the lawmakers. <laughs> mm. But there is a God in heaven we can petition. I said there is a God in heaven we can petition. Thou shalt also make a degree. It means that you have to come into your kingly place. He has made us kings and priests unto our God. Come into your kingly place. Hallelujah. Thou shalt also what? Decree a thing. It shall be established. You sit down. Let me show you something there. Verse 28 says, You will make a decision. Hmm? Hmm? You with me? It didn't say God will make a decision. You will make a decision. For all of you waiting for God to do something in 2019, I have, I have some bad news for you. He's not going to do anything. He's expecting you to make a decision. How do you mean he will not do anything for me? He's already present. There is nothing new under the sun. God will do for himself as he has said he will do. He is the unchanging God. Malachi 3 and verse 8. God is not changing for anything or anyone. It is us that need to come into the divine timeline. You need to give him something to work with. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, I'm just coming to him. Simply broken to the cross, I come. I cling to the old ragged. I'm glad you are clinging to the old ragged, uh, ragged cross. But after the cross, do you know there was Pentecost? And after Pentecost, you know they went abroad. You can't go abroad broke. God has to give you sustenance to go abroad. Are you listening, somebody? Thou shalt decree a thing means that you need to come into your kingly robe. Don't pray like some cheap pauper. You're a king's kid. You're a royal emblem of heaven. You represent the governmental authority of Jesus of Nazareth. You have authority in you and upon you. You have inside you the government of God. And upon you the government of God. You have all that it takes for you to rise in power and dominion. You are not cheap nothing. Because God does not make any second class anything. You are a royal masterpiece of the living God. His mighty power is available inside you. And you are praying as though. God was dead. My God is not dead. God is alive. He's alive and well. He raised the dead. He cleansed the leper. Hallelujah. He cured incurable diseases. And Jesus said, freely as you have received. Freely give. That's how we go into our world. We say to men, look on us. We're not saying that boastfully. As though we are in our own mind. But we are carriers of the kingdom mandate. We are ambassadors of the kingdom. We are appointed to make decrees and enact laws. <gasps> it was Archbishop of Canterbury. Who was in his closet praying and the king summoned for him. They kept knocking at the archbishops door but the man will not relent finally he got tired he got tired of their tauntings and the knockings for they put a paper underneath his door and said the king beckons you to come this has been the television broadcast series of the fresh fire worldwide ministries fresh fire worldwide ministries bringing salvation healing and deliverance We're happy you listen to the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord as at yet. We believe that by receiving the person of Jesus into your life, your life will be made anew. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel that if we believe on him, he will give us the right or the power to become children of God. Your life will take a different turn, a better turn. Now simply pray after me 
Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God and he came to die for my sins. Friends, if you pray that simple prayer under the basis and the authority of God's word, your spirit has been reborn. Find a Bible-believing church that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord without any fear and grow in it. Or else, just come right by our, any of our services and you'll be greatly blessed. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.